And what was my first theater going experience in almost six months since this pandemic started, Tenet served as the mind blowing blockbuster action flick that I needed to get back to the swing of things. So let's check it out. Welcome to Silver Screen Talk. My name is Luke LaPointe. I recently started this channel because movies are a big part of my life and I want to talk about them with people who care about them as much as I do. With that, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And most importantly, as we are talking about a blockbuster movie that frankly is a landmark movie in this calendar post pandemic, I want a very open discussion in the chat about what you thought about the movie, whether or not you've seen it, and what you are excited to see if you haven't seen it. I have a lot of great things to say about this movie, so let's get into the review. So as we all know, Tenet, which is directed by the great mastermind of film, tech, Christopher Nolan, uh, re was released this week, and the premise is armed with only one word, Tenet, and fighting for the survival of the entire world. The protagonist journeys through a twilight world of international espionage on a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time. And if you think that that uh, premise doesn't do the movie justice, you are absolutely correct. Getting into the positives of this movie, which there are a lot of, the first thing that really got me was that this was such a fresh and original movie with a very original premise and uh, filmmaking techniques. Uh, I was sitting in the theater trying to compare it to something I've seen in the past. And I really couldn't compare it to anything except for maybe some, thing, some other Nolan films like Inception and Memento with the, the time motifs and the, his film te uh, filmmaking techniques, the way he films things. Uh, but it, it really far supersedes those movies in terms of the motifs and the techniques. I mean, it was incredible. And before I can get into that, I want to talk about the cast because the cast did a great job in this movie. Uh, John David Washington is starting to uh, cement himself as one of the go-to actors in Hollywood with some of his recent roles, especially Black Klansman and now Tenet. And um, Elizabeth Debicki did a great job, a very emotional uh, role in this movie that she portrayed really well. And the character arc, the, well, the arc of emotion that she feels throughout this movie is so well portrayed by her because she's a world-class actor. Robert Pattinson is great in a supporting role and does a great job with his little quippiness, but also moving the plot forward and explaining this world World that is so new and confusing to us in a way that we can understand. And lastly, you got Kenneth Branagh, who is a Shakespearean actor. He is a thespian. He is a master class actor, and he does another great job with a powerful performance that really, really was convincing and made you see this madness and also this drive that this that this mobster has to uh, end the world. In addition to the great performances, it has a very deep plot. And what seemed confusing at first in the first act paid off really well in the latter half of the movie because of the smart use of the inversion technology by Nolan. And if you were really paying attention, those payoffs felt very well earned and not cop-outs because of the way that Nolan presents it. And uh, before I even talk about the inversion technology visually, the action, the visual effects in forward moving time were phenomenal and stunning. And things like a 747 crash into a building felt so authentic because it was. I don't know if you saw the behind the scenes stuff, but Christopher Nolan used a real 747 to crash into an air, uh, airplane hangar on a runway. And that is because Christopher Nolan is just committed to his craft. Some of the hand to hand stuff was really good and our firefight stuff was really good. And then you integrate that with this inversion technology, this inver inversion filmmaking technique, which was stunning on its own, just seeing a boat go backwards. But then you throw that into the action and it was absolutely mind blowing. Our first big hand to hand fight inversion scene was so visually captivating and just left me kept going, oh, he's doing this again, oh, oh my God. Like that is Christopher Nolan doing what he does best and blowing our minds. And then he integrates that into the firefights, car chases. The car chase was phenomenal. And like I said, again, left me speechless. And our final battle with this having to go forward, having to go backward, this inversion and moving forward in time at the same time was so well done 
and completed the story really well. The great thing about this inversion technology, as I've just been highlighting, is that it allowed Nolan and his crew to be very creative with scenes, and they were very well choreographed and very uh, intelligently choreographed, similar to some of the stuff from Inception, like the hallway scene, which was a feat of cinema. In addition, we had a top notch score by Ludwig Gorenson. I think one of his best. It added a lot of tension to scenes and kept you on the edge of your seat while stuff was going on. And so in that sense, it complemented what was going on on screen really well. And while there are so many great positives, there are a couple detractors from this movie that I have to mention. The first one is in the first act, the pacing is super quick. Nolan throws a lot of stuff at us all at once in a very short amount of time and expects it to all retain that information. And while it does pay off in the latter half of the movie, if you weren't paying attention in the first act, you were most likely very lost for the rest of the movie. Guarantee it. Um, and the plot can get a lot of, a little convoluted at times. I think Nolan went really heavy on this inversion technology because it was something that was very fresh and new. And he just kept throwing it at us. And it felt like we were in a paradox or like a loop right here. We're like, um, the timeline could get really murky and you kind of were trying to figure things out on the fly in terms of who was inverted, who wasn't, and how things were all getting put together. Um, so that was a problem at times for me. In addition, I don't really think this is a negative. It's not a positive. It's kind of like a neutral thing. But I think this movie created way more questions than it answered. And maybe that was Nolan's intention with this movie. I think he wants you to see it a couple times and really look into the little nuances of filmmaking that he uh, used. And I think with through the first run through, the first watching, you will have a lot of questions. Um, so I know for me, I'm going to see it a second time. I highly recommend that if you see it, you have to see it a second time to really fully understand it. Before I get into scoring this, if you like this review and want to see more of my reviews from this year, click on this playlist, this card up above, and you'll be able to see some of the other big movies from this pandemic time that I have reviewed. And uh, just support my channel, I appreciate it very much. Now getting into the score, if I were to score this with my brain as a critic, I would probably score this at around an 85% because while it is visually appealing, the plot's great, they can get a little convoluted and confusing at times, but as a fanboy, as a Nolan fanboy, and as a film fan in general, scoring with my heart, my heart score, versus my brain score. My heart score would be at 95% because I love this movie. For my first theater going experience in almost six months, I might be a little biased, but it was so worth it. And this is a movie I will see again and just another great addition to the Nolan collection. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and check out some of my other videos up around here. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in and keep loving movies as much as I 